as you know, my next book is Digital Dharma, How AI Can Elevate Spiritual Intelligence and Personal Well-Being. And one of the most important things in the book that I will share with you is the art of the prompt. It actually will, it actually will enhance your creativity and also expose you to all kinds of worldviews and give you access to express your own worldview and give you knowledge of the entire uh, entire history of human thought, if you choose so. Philosophical thought, um, spiritual thought, thought on health and well-being, which is my interest, thought on philosophy, thought on um, anything that you can think of. It's a large language model. And so I have started to use AI myself to actually express my worldview with a little greater authority, knowing what all other worldviews are and who agrees or disagrees with me. So let me share with you today's prompts, okay? I went on perplexity and I asked, this is today's first question. What are the basic tenets of naive realism? So the basic tenets of naive realism are, one, we believe we see the world objectively and without bias. The redness we perceive in a tomato is an inherent property of the tomato itself, not a characteristic of our perception. Well, that's obviously wrong, right? Uh, red is an experience in consciousness and the tomato only is emitting photons which have no color. But anyway, let's go on. Two, we expect others will come to the same conclusions about the world so long as they are exposed to the same information and interpret it. Three, we assume those who disagree with us must be ignorant, irrational or biased. We tend to attribute differences in perception to intellectual or moral defects in others. Four, naive realism provides a theoretical basis for several cognitive biases, including the false consensus effect, actor observer bias, bias blind spot, and fundamental attribution error. While compelling, naive realism has been criticized for ignoring the complexities of perception, including the role of interpretation and the limitations of our senses. Critics argue it can lead to e egocentricism, overconfidence, and failure to appreciate others' perspectives. So then I asked, would you say that uh, the philosophy of Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris and Michael Shermer and Christopher Hitchens and Daniel Dennett, are these philosophies based on naive realism? Give me a very intelligent answer. The philosophy of Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, Christopher Hitchens and other militant atheists does not appear to be directly derived from naive realism. While naive realism involves the belief that we perceive the world objectively as it really is, the militant atheist position is more specifically about rejecting God, uh, uh, rejecting belief in God or religion. Dawkins, Harris, and Hitchens wrote prominent eight, were prominent atheist authors. Well, two, two of them are still there. They are prominent atheist authors who wrote books critiquing religion from a scientific and rational perspective. Their arguments focused on the lack of empirical evidence for God's existence and the negative societal impacts of religious belief. However, the search results do not indicate. So that's what AI does. It goes into search results. You know, it uh, searches the grid or the matrix of thought. However, the search results do not indicate a clear connection between the atheist philosophy and the specific tenets of naive realism, such as the belief that others who disagree must be igno ignorant or irrational. The militant atheist position is more narrowly focused on religion rather than a general theory of perception and knowledge. 
Okay, so then I said, would you say that the philosophy of militant atheists and their attack on the on religion or the idea of God, and I include Christopher Hitchens, Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, and others, would you say that their, philo uh, their attack is on the monotheistic religions and they have not actually explored Eastern wisdom traditions, including Buddhism, or which offer an alternative, which is consciousness is fundamental, and pure consciousness, Atman and Brahman, would then be the equivalent of a formless, non-local field of possibilities that is infinite, spaceless, timeless, borderless, without cause, and essentially divine. <clears throat> Here's the answer. The militant atheist philosophy of authors like Christopher Hitchens, Richard Dawkins, and Sam Harris does appear to be primarily focused on criti critiquing monotheistic religions like Christianity and Islam. Their arguments emphasize the lack of empirical evidence for God's existence and the negative societal impacts of religious belief. <clears throat> However, the search results do not indicate that these militant atheists have extensively explored or critiqued Eastern wisdom traditions like Buddhism. Buddhism often posits consciousness as a fundamental, as fundamental and describes an ultimate reality like Brahman or Atman that shares some attributes with the Western idea of God, such as being formless, non-local and infinite. So while militant atheists may reject the impersonal interventionist God of monotheism, <clears throat> the search results do not suggest that they have grappled with the more abstract conceptions of ultimate reality found in Eastern thought. Their critiques appear to be narrowly focused on the Judeo-Christian Islamic um, God rather than a comprehensive rejection of all spirituous, spiritual or religious ideas. In summary, militant atheism, as exemplified by Hitchens, Dawkins, and Harris, seems to be primarily a reaction against monotheistic religions, not necessarily a complete philosophical system that has engaged with the full spectrum of religious and spiritual thought, especially Eastern traditions that do not posit a personal God. Their arguments may not fully address the more abstract, conception of ultimate reality found in some Eastern philosophies. And I said, you know, continuing the thread, can you comment on Schrodinger's view, which he expressed in his book, What is Life, where he compared Atman and Brahman to the wave function? Answer, in his book, What is Life, Erwin Schrodinger drew parallels between the concepts of Atman and Brahman for, from Vedanta philosophy and the wave function in quantum mechanics. Atman represents the individual self or soul, while Brahman is the universal self or ultimate reali reality in Vedanta. A central tenet is Tattva Masi, that the Atam Atman and Brahman are identical and that there is only one universal consciousness. Schrodinger saw this analogous to the wave function in quantum physics, which describes reality as a unified whole rather than separate particles. He argued that just as the wave function cannot be divided into separate parts, the Vedantic view sees consciousness as singular without, with the individual self being equivalent to the all-encompassing -encom universal consciousness. Schrodinger was fascinated by the Upanishadic idea that reality arises from consciousness. He believed that uh, this mapped neat, neatly to quantum physics, where reality exists as waves that collapse into particles upon observation. So, in Schrodinger's view, the Vedantic concepts of uh, Brahman and Atman and the idea of consciousness as fundamental were highly compatible with and anticipated by the insights of quantum mechanics. He saw both as rejecting the notion of a separate of separate independent entities in favor of an interconnected unified whole then i asked it to go into the math of uh, quantum physics uh, which i'm not going to share with you right now but uh, i did ask later questions on evolution 
and consciousness and mutations and epigenetics and I'll share those. But the point here is, you know, I have been kind of suggesting this view now for the last three decades, I have been attacked extensively for this. And, uh, you know, I've suggested the idea of quantum consciousness. And of course, uh, that has also been attack. Uh, so I have actually did ask a question about about quantum consciousness and I, I'll find it and I'll, I'll share that with you because uh, it's a whole separate topic on quantum consciousness, evolution, uh, random mutations and uh, you know can we reconcile uh, consciousness guided evolution with Darwinian evolution all of this you know which I've been thinking of 20 years but now or 30 years, but now we have, you know, a large language model that helps you navigate everyone's experiences, everyone's uh, perspectives, everyone's views, scientific, philosophical, spiritual, and much, much more. And that's the value that you'll get from digital dharma, how AI can elevate spiritual intelligence and personal well-being in a very personal way. And one of the most basic chapters in the book is the art of the prompt. And I'll continue to share my explorations also to give you an idea that the question is even more important than the answer. Because when you pose questions that express and challenge multiple worldviews, you still get an idea how to express your own worldview and who agrees and who disagrees with you. So thanks very much uh, for listening and let me know what you think.